Eight, I got sick, a little cold going around. And yesterday I lost my voice, like completely gone. It was, you can ask my wife, it was pretty shaky. And then, uh, so you might hear some interesting sounds from me tonight, amen. But uh, yeah, just a heads up. But praise God, I got my voice back for the most part. So, but if I start shouting at you, then it might just like, ah, you know, just kind of get out a little bit there. But, you know, uh, just depend on the Lord tonight as I should every night. So, um, how are you guys doing? How's everyone's midweek going? Great, great. All right. So, uh, let's open up to Mark chapter 7. And we're going to turn to verse 14. Um, what defiles a person? Look at that title. Isn't that great? All right. What defiles a person? So, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. What defiles a person? Have you guys ever wondered that? You never said the devil made me do it? We're going to get to the bottom of this one. So, uh, verse 1, we we're, were there last week. And uh, <clears throat> I got a cough drop just in case. Maybe I should start whispering through here. I'm going to lose it pretty quick. So we're talking about the, the Pharisees. And uh, so they, they, they came from Jerusalem, the scribes, the Pharisees, they came from Jerusalem. And they thought they would kind of trap Jesus, right? And they, they were trying to, to, to bring down his image or bring down, help people, make his people not respect him much. And uh, so what did they bring up? The, the defiled hands. You guys remember they didn't wash it. He was watching the disciples. The disciples were not washing their hands appropriately. Was that a commandment of God or a tradition of man? Tradition, right? You guys remember, I think that was two weeks ago. It wasn't last week, it was two weeks ago. So that was a tradition. And, and then Jesus is like, man, the, prophe- the prophecy from Isaiah, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are, are far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching his doctrines, the commandments of men. And we talked about the difference between religion and truly having a heart for God, right? And so that was the main thing. Does God want your religion? He wants your what? Your heart. So that's what we're going to talk about more tonight is your heart. So that's where we're at. Verse 14, let's read through. We're going to go 14 through 30. There's two stories here. The second story, strangely, it just sounds like it doesn't fit, but it does. And we'll talk about how it fits because the Holy Spirit inspired Mark in writing this, and nothing here is by mistake. God doesn't make mistakes, right? So here we go, verse 14. <clears throat> and I should call on someone to say it for me, right? I'm going to give out pretty quick here. But And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand there's nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from the outside cannot defile him? Since it enters not his heart, but his stomach and is expelled. Then he declares all foods clean. Verse 20, and he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, Theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. And we'll break all of those down. Amen. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Verse 24. Here's kind of just kind of changes here. But I'll tell you what, it still relates. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know Yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, for the statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today, God. Thank you for your word. I just pray, Lord, that uh, you just help me keep my voice through this. And if not, I'm sure Pastor Moore will finish. But I just also want to just pray that I decrease and you increase, Lord, that you give me the words to say. And most of all, that your spirit just go out and just uh, soften each heart, Lord. 
That's a big part of this message tonight. Just soften our hearts in your presence, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So here we go. Just kind of going back to verse 14. We'll read through this and just take our time. Getting through the story, right? I think it was kind of clear reading it, what defiles a man. But we'll go through it again. And he called the people to him again and said to them, the same people, right, that they just got done telling him about, you know, he just got done uh, just completely telling them, like, your people's honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. All of that. So he calls these people to him again and says, hear me, all of you, and understand. Now, there's a difference here between hearing and understand. You guys see that? Hear me, that's one thing. You can hear, but do you understand? Do you see how there's two different things? You can hear plenty of things, but not understand. I teach math. I'll tell you what. Plenty of students probably hear me, and they don't understand what's going on. And I think a lot of us in church, we can hear the pastor, but do we understand what's going on? Two different things. Verse 15, there's nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. So what comes out of us is what defiles us. Verse 17, and he went, and when he entered the house and left the people's disciples, asked him about the parable. So here we see the disciples again. Do the disciples understand yet? No, they're still without understanding. They're around him a lot. Very obedient in different ways. And, and, and here they are still just, you know, they heard it. There they are asking about it, but did they understand it? No. Jesus, I, I need a little bit more to this. I don't quite understand what you're saying. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him? You see, what's going on with the Pharisees before? They washed their hands. And Pastor Moore kind of helped me understand the next day on Thursday when we met that they didn't just do this like back in their house, not in front of anyone. They did it right outside of the marketplace in front of everybody so they could see. They're kind of washing themselves clean of like all the filth, like saying we're above you in a way. And you realize they're so focused on their outside and what people see. Do you know anybody, not including yourself, obviously, but do you know anyone who worries about how they look on the outside? And I'm not talking about doing their hair, not, not talking about the way they dress. I, I think about this. When, when one of my kids acts up, do I worry about how they make me look? Or do I worry about what's going on in their heart at that moment? Do you see what I'm saying? The difference, right? Like if somebody, you know, you're worried about your reputation. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But that's what the Pharisees worried about. They worried about the reputation. They worried about the outside. They worried about what people thought of them. That They, they worried that people made sure that, that they did it in front of everyone. So everyone knew, oh, those guys are clean. I want to be like them. They're super clean. Man, in, in Leviticus 11, there's this whole just thing about what to eat and not to eat. And, and, and uh, my wife and I, we have a Jewish friend. She was talking about and, and about how the the um, kosher diet. You can tell the sickness is starting to take some of my words away. But this kosher diet that she's on, how now these days they understand all the nutritional benefits of being on a kosher diet. You know the ceremonial clean diet. There's a lot of benefits to it, right? God gave it for their benefit, but you could see the Pharisees took it to the next level. They didn't just think about their own benefit from it. How God was looking after them. They saw it as like challenge accepted. I'm going to show everyone else I can do it better than everyone else. I'm not going to eat that. I'm not going to touch that. That's filth. You know, would anyone eat a pig? No, they're not going to eat a pig. It's, it's ceremonial. It's not clean. So they're so focused about what's coming inside. What we're talking about is food here. You know, it, it, and it's not about the diet. It's not about the outside. Do, do you realize in Matthew 23, 27, when Jesus talks to the Pharisees, he calls them hypocrites. You remember that word? We talked about it last time, hypocrites. What's another word for hypocrite? And remember? Actor. A bunch of actors, a bunch of fakes, right? He calls them hypocrites. You know what he calls them in Matthew 23, 27? Whitewashed tombs. Well, that's kind of strange, right? And you guys don't see it. When you go down to Holtville, the tombs don't really look that nice. They're like stones in the ground because they're easy to mow around and everything. Some of us know it. You know, easy, easy to mow around is a good thing, right? But, you know, the old school tombs, have you seen some of these things? They're beautiful, aren't they? And they would wash them and they'd be clean on the outside, right? The outside looks good. But what's inside of a tomb? Dead man's bone. Death. Death is inside of a tomb, right? So he tells them, he's telling them, guys, you look good on the outside. But what's going on on the inside? There's death. He just straight tells them. I don't know how much better you could say something. Man, does Jesus hit right at the heart. And I want to make sure you guys are clear. 
when, when they say it's not about what comes inside of you, it's not, he's not talking about watching television. Television wasn't around. TikTok, all that other stuff. He's not talking about the filth you watch. That's still bad. That still affects your heart. He's talking about the ceremonial eating and cleaning and all those things. He's talking about this outwardness that people would do, things people would see. He's talking about the particular foods you would eat. You know, they'd wash the bowls, make sure they're clean. And sure, you don't want to catch something and, and have a bad stomach bug for a while. That's not fun. That's why you want to make sure these things are clean. But these guys are trying to say if they eat with clean bowls, if they eat with clean food, if they eat the right things, and they're clean on the inside. But is that truth? Are they really clean on the inside? No. They're like whitewashed tombs. They're clean on the outside, but on the inside, it's just filth. It's horrible. So don't read this passage and apply it as I can watch whatever I want because it doesn't matter what comes in. No, what goes in those eyes and what hits your heart, if it's filth, it's going to mess with you. I don't understand how you guys can watch pornography and think it doesn't affect you. That's just filth. It's going to affect you. That's not what this is saying. This is talking about food. I mean, that's why he says it right there. Verse 19, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach. Does pornography enter your stomach? No, it doesn't. So we're talking about food there. You know, when you watch TikTok and all those other things and all those different things come on, if it's entering your heart, we're talking about the heart here. But, but food itself, and that's what it says, thus he declared all foods clean. You can eat pork, you can eat all these things, it doesn't matter. It's just going to get expelled from your body in the waste. But, but here's the thing, this is really, if you want to get down to the heart of the issue, is character versus reputation. And I tell you what, when I heard this the first time, it convicted me. And everyone here should be convicted. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Because there's a difference between character and reputation. I think my brother Timothy Lozano is the first person that told me about this. I'll give him some credit there. And character is about who you are. And, and that's what's going on in this passage. It's talking about your character. Reputation. What do you guys think reputation is? What others think you are, right? Who others think about you. What they think about you. And so, well, are we so focused on our reputation? Or do we care about our character? Do we want to fix the things we do because we care about what others think? Or do we care about what God thinks and we want to get closer to Him? Do we want to have a heart after Him? And that's what's going on here. And the Pharisees, what do you think they cared about? Their character or their reputation? And what do you care about? Don't answer it. But think about it. I'm guilty there too. I've been there. I tell you what, as soon as I do something a sin the first thing i'm thinking is like who did i do that around and what are they going to think of me she's laughing because she knows me no i'm kidding she probably feels the same about herself no, i'm kidding but anyways we all probably should be laughing at that one because we all probably feel the same we worry about what people think but guys it doesn't matter what people think it matters what god thinks so is it your character or your reputation and god is and jesus is saying it's about the heart guys that's what verse 20, and he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. What comes out of you? That's really what shows what's going on. You know, I, I've, I've gone, to, have you ever hung out with someone? Like one time, like one, for like five minutes, like that's a really nice guy. That's just too bad he's not a Christian. I just feel like he'd be a Christian. He's a really nice guy. I'm sure he thinks the same about himself, right? I'm a really nice guy. If I go to, 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 to the judgment throne, I'm sure I can tell God I'm a really nice guy. But I'll tell you what, have you ever hung out with a person, you thought he was a really nice guy, you hang out with them again for a long period of time, continually, and they're really nice to a lot of people, but you start to see everything, not to nitpick them, but you start to see their inside and who they truly are, and you start to realize it's just wickedness. It's just coming in a different form. And I'm telling you, that's, that's what it's all about. You can sit there and you can try to fix your outside, there's plenty of people that they worry about the reputation. They're religious. They don't even go to church, but they still worry about the reputation and being a good American and all those things. But still, on the inside, they're just as rotten as the rest of us. They're whitewashed tombs. Guys, what, what's coming out of them? And I'm telling you, if, they're, if they don't know Christ and you hang out with them long enough, you're going to find out what's inside of them. It's going to come out. And they need the Lord. And there's times I got the Lord, and there's times filth comes out. 
I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to be open with you guys. I, I hate it. I don't want it to happen. But it happens. And we're going to talk about how can we help get that out of our lives. Does anyone want that out of their lives? So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You can be as religious as you want, guys. But what's going on? What's coming out of you? What's going on in your heart? You know, what do you desire? What do you think about others? What's your passion? Think about it. What do you think about other people? Can you stand them? Do you tolerate them? Can you not stand them? Do you get irritated? Or do you love them? That's what's going on in here. Oh, you can pretend. You can give them a fake smile. But man, if you can, you know, what's going on is burning inside of you. Then that's really where your heart is. That's what's going on in here. And guess what? Eventually, it's going to come out. Eventually, it's going to come out. Do you put others before yourself or you're looking to satisfy your own flesh and all your thoughts? Is that what's going on in your heart? So let's break down this list. Are you guys down to break down this list? We got, I think, 13 items, if I can count right. I'm not so good at counting. I had someone in church the other day. We were trying to count. It was like 8 plus 6, and I was just like, and they were like 14, and I was like, wow, that was quick. And they are like, weren't you a math teacher? And it's just like, wow, okay. So 13, I think, here. So we start with evil thoughts. That's the first one, verse 21. From within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. We're going to start with evil thoughts. What do you guys think that is? That's brain, that's your thinking, evil. This kind of encompasses everything. That's the first one on the list because it kind of encompasses everything. We're going to break down the other 12, 6 and 6, but this one's just everything. What evil thoughts? This is about fantasizing about or planning evil deeds. Have you ever planned evil deeds? You might not even realize you're planning it, you know, as you're starting to think just bad about people. Have you guys ever had someone you just can't stand? Yeah, we all have, right? I think so. Don't, don't make me feel guilty. So we've all had someone we can't stand. Like, they don't even do anything wrong. They just walk in and you're just like, ugh. You know what I'm talking about? You know, unless I'm the only one. But there's always that person. And, and guess what? Is it their problem or is it your problem? You can't stand them. That's your own evil thoughts. Do you see what I'm talking about here? I mean, do you see what Jesus is talking about here? They're not the ones causing your evil thoughts. You are. That's your heart. You're the one thinking that about them. And guess what? It festers and festers like a pimple filling with pus, right? And eventually, what does that pimple do? I know that sounds disgusting because it's true. It is disgusting. What does that pimple do? It bursts and that pus comes out. It's just nasty. That person finally gets to that point where your religion can't get any further and you just pop and you let them have it. Or someone else is talking about me like, finally, my opportunity to bring down their reputation. This is it. This is the moment I was waiting for. I felt the same too. Now it's justified. It was just brewing in there, those evil thoughts. You know, does anyone know Pastor Norm Chandler? I just had him as a friend on Facebook this week. I'm glad he accepted my request. He posts some great things. He said, if you want to put someone down, put them down on your prayer list. And I was like, I'm stealing that, Norm. I didn't put in the comment. I need to put in the comment now. I didn't say I stole that one. So, I mean, that's great. If you want to put someone down, put them down on your prayer list. So if they come in and you're sitting there and it's just like, I can't stand them, put them down on your prayer list and you pray for them. You'll love them as Jesus loved them. That's what we're called to do. Jesus freed you from that. There's no reason for you to keep carrying that. And the sad thing is how many brothers and sisters in the church think that about one another? That's not fellowship. That's not the oneness God had intended for us. How many guys within the home think that about each other? Don't answer that. Okay. Another thing about evil thoughts is godless way of thinking and approach to life. It's a godless way. Man, does that encompass so many things? Do you bring God into all your thoughts? Do you bring God into all your decisions? If not, that's evil thoughts. We need to be bringing God into everything. That's faith. That's what he wants us to live by, by faith. Bring him to every choice that we make and every trial that we come by. And every time we think about something, we think about God. He should be filling our every thought. He should be just inspiring that every thought that we have towards other people, towards other things, towards everything. Think about God. It's going to change everything. But evil thoughts, no, godless. It's a godless way of thinking. 
So out of a person, out of you, the way we're born, evil thoughts. So the next six, these are evil deeds. So the next one on the list is sexual immorality. I think this is funny. The Greek word is porneia. Let me go to the first four letters. P-O-R-N. The Greek word. Do you realize when you watch porn, you're literally watching in English translation sexual immorality? That's what it's called. They call it that. They just hit it behind like a Greek word here. Porneia, right? So, you know, it just sounds so much worse to tell me, you know, sexual immorality. Like, hey, by the way, when, you're, when, you, when you Google porn, you just Googled sexual immorality. Oh, we don't want to think that, but that's what we did. And, and, and what that is, that's any sexual activity that involves someone other than one's spouse, and particularly prostitution and fornication. Guys, this comes from within. Oh, oh, you don't understand. It was the moment. I was in the moment. No, no, no. It, does, it doesn't just happen like that. Oh, no, no, it was. It was just the moment. You see, my, my wife, she's just not giving me enough time. Oh, my husband's just not giving me enough time. It's no. That was your heart. That was your evilness. That was your wickedness. And you were lusting for days and for months and for years before you went and committed that act. That's just what came out. When the pimple bursted, that's what came out. Is it festered? You let that just sexual immorality in your thoughts continue. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? What Jesus is talking about here in the heart, it began in your thoughts. It began. And what's going to happen is those began as they just continue and continue. It becomes an action in your life. And then you act on it. So don't sit there. It's like the devil made me do it at that very moment. You don't understand what she did. It was just one time that she flirted with me. It's like, okay, maybe she flirted with you one time, but something happened. You've been, you've been planning this in some way, shape or form in the past, in your own thoughts. Guys, we've got to flee from sin when this happens. We've got to cling to Jesus. Next one on the list is another one. Theft. Theft. There's usually a reason behind that, isn't there? Whatever we need the money for, whether we want the item. I'm not going to go into details of theft. I think we know what that means, right? Take something that's not yours. Murder. Deliberately ending an innocent life. But Jesus says we murder in our heart when we hate. Do you see how that starts? Jesus hits it right again in the heart. We don't want to hear that word, but it starts here in the heart. When you begin to hate, are you going to murder and deliberately end someone's life if you're not so full of hate? But it starts the hate. It starts here, guys, in the heart. It's incredible how all these things, just Christ hits it right on the spot. They want to say that Jesus isn't the son of God. They want to say that the, that the Bible's false, but man, how is it so true? How is it that we're so convicted? How does it so, make so much sense? Yet psychologists, you know, they're still trying to work some of this stuff out. It's just like, guys, straight up, all this is in your heart. And I'll tell you what, every single person being convicted by the Holy Spirit knows exactly that this is truth here. Adultery, that's intercourse that violates marriage covenant. It's a little different than sexual immorality, but it's in the same category. A slight difference. It's a different Greek word, so they list it as a different one as well. But we're talking about violating that marriage covenant. Sexual morality, you know, you could be non-married and all this stuff, and it's just, you know, fornication. Uh, coveting. Desiring to gain more than one's due. You tell I wrote these from somewhere else. They're bigger words than I use. Harboring possessive greed. We know what coveting is. I want that. It's not mine, but I, I see it, and I covet, and I want it. it starts in the heart. And eventually it comes out, doesn't it? Oh, oh, is, is, does that just have to be material belongings to covet? Oh, I see that family. I see the joy. I see the fake postings they put on Facebook and how much fun they're having. And I want that. Just, it's got to understand here. That starts here, guys. Starts in the heart. Wickedness. A cultivated disposition towards sin. Just growing, just you, you just the sin just growing and growing and growing and just continuing, just taking over. So it brings forth death as we read in James. And notice all of these violate the second half of the Ten Commandments. You go through that list of Ten Commandments, Jesus just hit them right on. And right on the head. So so we, we have the overall evil thoughts, and then we have these six, the next six, the final six are aspects of immoral character. So the last are more actions. This is character. Remember we talked about character versus reputation? So now we're talking about character again. These six characters here. 
Deceit. Anyone know what deceit is? Lies. Not telling the truth. Misrepresenting the truth. Starts in the heart. And then it comes out. Sensuality. That's a lack of self-control. I doubt any of us here have a lack of self-control. I'm sure we all drive on the street, someone cuts us off, and we're like, it's fine. I'm going to contain myself. Glory be to God, right? Violence. We never act out violently, right? Or yell or scream, get upset. Um, sensuality can also cover sexual activity, lack of self-control. Gluttony. It's another one as well. I, I bought this pack of Dove uh, chocolates with like caramel. Oh, man, they're so good. And and uh, I, I like caught them like three days ago. And my wife like looks at the trash in the empty bag and she picks it up. And she goes, "There's 28 in here." And I'm like, "Yes, they're they're good." You know, I kind of love chocolate, but I look forward to it probably a little more than I should. I mean, I sit there and I meditate. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna have a couple of those. And then after I have a couple of those, the flavor goes away. So. I'm going to have a couple more. And next thing you know, you go through 28 in about two days. But let's not talk about that. Um, okay, moving on. We have envy. Jealous. Are you envious of others? Are you jealous of others? Oh, jealousy is a big issue, guys. Don't think that's not a big issue. How many times do we see things that they got? How many times do we see situations they're in? How many times do we see them get praised at work or different things? And we want that. Starts right here, guys. Remember uh, Philippians 4, 13? Anyone, anyone remember that verse? I could do all things. I, I was talking about that in class today. It was like, you know, so we gave a 30-question test, and they're freaking out. I was like, it's all right, Philippians 4, 13. Like, which one's that? I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then they're like, oh, yeah, that's true. And I was like, that doesn't mean you're going to get an A. It just means you're going to be content with an F or an A, you know? It, it's about being content in any situation, right? Are, are you going to be content Christ helps you with that, being content in every situation. Not that things are going to go the way you want them to. Paul wrote that in prison. But that he found the key to contentment is Christ in any situation. Slander. Oh, slander. Remember we were talking about that guy that you can't stand? It starts then, and I'm telling you, next thing you know, you're talking bad about them. I'm sure we're all guilty in here. Or has no one, no one here ever said anything bad about anybody? Right? But slander, where does it start? In the heart. You guys seeing the pattern here? Look at this one. This one can kind of encompass everything. What's the next one? Anyone know the next one? If anyone following along here on the verse? Pride. Thinking too highly of yourself. Arrogance. Superiority. Pride. Is pride a problem? I think Pastor Moore told me, what's the middle letter of pride? I. What's the middle letter of sin? Getting the pattern here? Pride, guys. What's the problem with pride? Do you think the Pharisees were proud? Oh, I can do it on my own. I don't need Jesus. I wash my hands better than his disciples do. I eat cleaner than his disciples do. I wash the bowls. I clean the couches. I do everything ceremonially, but what's inside their heart? Whitewashed tombs, what's inside the tomb? Death, sin. Man, all of these guys, all of these come from the heart of man. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Do you guys see, like, what's the problem here? Is our heart. We're born sinners. We all got this problem. Romans 3.10. I love this verse in 11. I'm sorry, Arminians. Arminians. I shouldn't even have said that here, but I'm sorry, guys. Romans 3.10-11. through 11, None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. In the next part, no one seeks God. Man, this is what we seek. This is what our heart seeks is those 13 items. Those of you not paying attention right now are seeking those 13 items. That's what your heart cares about. That's why you're not paying attention. You don't seek God. We're sinners. It's like, well, what about 
What, what about m- my own decisions and, and all of these things? It's like, man, free will. You're in a fallen nature, guys. I hate to tell you, you're sinners. What can we do? The best we could do is just clean the outside. And look at the Pharisees. I got a, I got a story for you guys. You guys ever seen a pig before? And they kind of have that like sound, like that kind of stuff going around, crazy, filthy animals. And, and you see them and they roll around. What do they roll around in? Mud and poop and all this nasty stuff, right? So let's just say you have your pig, right? You take them and you clean them. You spend time cleaning them. You spend time brushing them. You spend time, you get the brush behind their ears. You brush their teeth, put a nice lotion on them, you know, help them with some of that, just like, you know, parched skin and stuff and all of that. And you're like, man, finally, you know, this pig smells clean. This pig is good. What are they going to do the first second you release them? They're going to go right back in the mud and they're going to get dirty again because they're still a pig. Do you see what Jesus is saying here? That, that you can clean the outside. But what's on the inside, guys? What's in your heart? I, I think of children, right? This is a tough one because this hits at home. And this is really hard. But with children, you could sit there. And guess what? You can beat them into submission. You could yell at them into submission. You can tell them how to live their lives. And guess what? On the outside, they'll do it. But they won't embarrass you. They'll get through high school doing everything you told them to do. But what's going on in their heart? If God hasn't changed it, they're still filthy sinners. And the first day they get out of your house, what are they going to do? They're going to sin. Well, they're probably sinning all along, and it was obviously in their heart, and they were just keeping it from you. You just didn't hear anything about it. You know, they're just, they, they were sinning. They just didn't get caught. And if they, if they found out, you know, if you found out they sinned, they were sorry that you caught them. They weren't sorry about the sin. They're just sorry that you caught them. But the day they get out of your house, they're going to live life the way they want to live it. So what do we do, guys? It's got to come from the inside out. It's got to come from God. God's the one that changes. And I want to hopefully encourage you here, because this is sounding so negative, but Jeremiah 31, 31. Let's go ahead and turn there. Jeremiah 31, 31. If I could find Jeremiah. Oh, I'm here. Look at that. Somewhere in the middle, right? Past Psalms. Hear that joke between Genesis and Revelation? <laughs> Knee slapper. Right? Okay, sorry. Hear that one quite a bit. It's somewhere around Second Samson. I'll, I'll, that's my favorite one. Love that book. And this was titled the New Covenant. You know, that, that, that's not inspired to Jeremiah. You know, the, the Bible writers didn't put those in there. It was the people that translated. But it's very appropriate here. So he's going to talk about the Old Covenant. So Jeremiah 31, 31. Sorry, Mr. Zinn, I didn't give you a heads up on this one. But verse 31, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. A new covenant. So he had an old covenant, right? Verse 32, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. So so realize the covenant he made with them, the whole purpose was to have a relationship. Read Deuteronomy 6, it's it's so that they can know him. It's like the Constitution, it's here to protect us. God gave them these set of rules like, hey, go by this, this is to help you. This is for you to know him, but guess what, they broke it. And did they break it once? They broke it again. And he gave them another chance. And they broke it again. And he gave them another chance. And they broke it again. Have you ever read 1 Kings and 2 Kings and 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles and Judges? In like the entire Old Testament, you're like, man, you guys, you keep breaking it, right? Can you blame them? What's going on in their hearts? Without the Holy Spirit inside them, what's going on in their hearts? Wickedness, sin, evil thoughts. So don't get mad at them. You would do the same. Verse 33, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. 
God, I need something more. I don't need the law outside of me. I can't obey it. I'm wicked. My heart is far from you. What am I going to do? Well, guess what? I'm going to make a new covenant, cutting the blood of my son, where I'm going to put the law in you. That's what he's saying here. For this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Do you guys see it now? What do you need to do to get clean on the inside? The Holy Spirit, you need God to write His law on your heart. We need to submit to Him. We need to repent and say, God, I don't want this in my life anymore. I just want you. In verse 34, And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. You guys see the relationship here. Getting into his presence and knowing him. And how do we do that? It ends right here. It's so beautiful. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. That's how it is, guys. His grace, His mercy, submitting to Him and accepting His grace and mercy and getting to know Him. And you spend that time in His presence and what does He do to your heart? He takes His law and writes it. You guys ever heard Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing? I love that song. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. I don't, you know, Pastor Moore, I know he doesn't like those lyrics. I don't either because it's so true, right? We just want to leave God. But what does he say? Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Are we giving him our heart? Are we getting into his presence? Are we getting to know him and accepting and just realizing his grace and mercy, that by that this is the new covenant cut in the blood of Jesus, that by Christ's blood, we can come into his presence because of the forgiveness of sins. We have the confidence to enter the holy places and in his presence be changed from the inside. All that filthiness, those 13 items can be gone. And, and if you read through Romans, sure, our flesh is still there. And there's a battle of the Spirit and the flesh. But I tell you what, the more time you spend with the Lord, the more time the Spirit, and you're filled with the Spirit, the more and more these things are going to fade away. And the more and the more the glory of God is going to be lived out in your lives. If we had time, I was going to go to Romans 6, but I've already gone so late here. Um, let's go ahead and just go back to Mark 7. We're going to get right into this last story here. It's It's incredible how this writing here, there's a contrast, right? So we just got done with the Pharisees. The Pharisees were religious. They cared about the outside. They cared about being clean. And we're going to go to the complete opposite right now. And I want to show you the difference, the contrast of this woman here. So verse 24, we're in chapter 7, verse 24 says, And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. There's a history there. We could go over it later. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know. Look at how popular he is. He tried to slip away, yet he could not be hidden. I'm sure he meant to be discovered by this woman. But he did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. That's how popular Jesus was then. He's still popular today. Verse 25. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Did the Pharisees come and fall down at his feet? No. But the Syrophoenician woman, she came prostrate, face down, flat at his feet. Verse 26. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. See, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her. Don't you realize she's a Gentile? Is, is a Gentile clean? Is she living a ceremonial clean life? Not at all. And, and not only that, she's not even just a man. She's a woman, a Gentile woman. You know, the, the, the Jews didn't treat their women. You know, they, they kind of held them in a low area. But the Gentiles even more so. But here's Jesus with this woman here. 
And, and she begged. It, it's, it's the imperfect tense beg. She asked and asked and asked and asked and asked. She continued to do it. God, Jesus, please, please, please. I think sometimes we get into that point in our life, right? Please, God, please. And should we stop? She didn't stop. You can imagine the disciples kind of getting irritated by now, like you know, trying to kick this woman away, as we saw in previous stories. And 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 she, he said to her, verse twenty-seven. He said to her, "Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the child's bread and throw it to the dogs." Now, I believe Jesus is just testing her here. I don't think he means evil to her at all. He didn't sin, but he's testing her. Let the children be fed first. Let the Jews be fed first. And look at her answer. But she answered him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. See, Jesus went to the Pharisees. And they judged him. They sat there and they're like, He's not clean enough to be with us. But here's God in the flesh here. She knows. She comes to him. She's humble and she begs. She has Her daughter has an unclean spirit. She's a, a Gentile. She's unclean to the Jew. And she understands her position here. Does she say, no, no, no. My daughter deserves it. You don't understand. She's just a child. God, she deserves it. How many of us say that so many times? Oh, we don't deserve that. Or we deserve this. And we go to God and we get upset with God. And we sit there and we say, no. We, we, we're not deserving a death of our sin, but we just went through that list. That's what's within us. We are deserving a death. We're deserving it so much worse. She knew her place. She knew. She, she, had, she had no, there's, there's nothing that God owes her. But she was so desperate. I'll just take the crumbs of what you're giving them. Just give me the crumbs. What the dogs would eat. What's left over after that falls down to the ground? I just need you, Lord. And Jesus commended her faith in Matthew. If you read the story there. Did the Pharisees have faith? They had pride. But this woman, humility, complete humility, and, and just see that contrast. We got ceremonially clean. People clean on the outside. Religious people on the outside. And this woman by no means. Completely unclean. Gentile. Woman. Demon possessed daughter. We have the proud over here. But we have the one who's prostrate before the Lord at his feet. Humble. Contrite. We got these over here with no faith. Or need of God. I don't need you. I can do it myself. I can clean myself. But you got this one. Full of faith. Full of trust. God, please. I, you may not do it, but I'm going to keep asking you to. See, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how clean you are. You know, how clean you think you are on the outside. How dirty you think you are on the outside. You just need to turn to the Lord and have faith. Lay at His feet. Prostrate before Him. Humble yourself and get into his presence and let him clean you from the inside out. Amen. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word, God. I just pray that we just act on this and get into your presence, God, and let you just write your law on our hearts and clean us up from the inside out. I know sometimes we slip and we don't want to, God, but it is our flesh, but I just pray that we flee from sin, anything intentional, any intentional evil thoughts. God, I just pray we flee from them and run completely the other direction. I just want to get into your presence, Lord, and let you change us from the inside out. Just thank you for your grace and for your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.